How you doing guys, it's Kim here from Retro Archives and today I'm going to talk about playing Game Boy Advance on your PSP and I'm going to show you how you can do it on your PSP also. With today's huge popularity of all kinds of retro emulation handhelds, you may be happy to know that good old PSP can also run many retro systems through emulation in addition to of course playing PSP perfectly and official PlayStation 1 support as well. So you are not going to run out of games anytime soon with the PSP. It can be a decent little retro machine with excellent built-in controls still in 2025 and beyond. By the way, in order to do this, you need to have custom firmware installed on your PSP. And I actually do have an easy to follow guide on my channel and down in the description that works for every model of PSP and is really easy to do, so check that out if you need to. Now, if you already have a custom firmware, we are ready to go ahead and see how you can play some advanced classics on your PSP. Now, first you need to go to this website right here and there is a link down in the description. So from this website, we're going to download the emulator itself called temp gba so go ahead and download this zip file just like i do in the video then we just wait for the download listen to some good music and wait for a few seconds okay next thing you need to do is locate the downloaded zip file and extract it once you do that, we get the folder we need to transfer to our PSP. Now, before we start transferring and adding games, there is one thing you need in order for this emulator to work, which is the BIOS file of Game Boy Advance, and it's called TBA underscore BIOS dot bin. And unfortunately, I can't provide you this file, so you have to get this one yourself. But once you do, we just transfer the TBA BIOS.bin file inside the temp TBA folder we extracted from the zip file, just like I do in the video. Okay, when you have done that, we are basically all ready with the emulator itself, and all we need are the games we want to play. So go ahead and get your game files ready, and let's connect our PSP to the computer. Now here you can see my PSP memory card when connected to the PC and from here we copy and paste the temp GBA folder and make sure you have the GBA BIOS.bin file inside it also. We go to PSP then game folder and inside this folder we copy and paste the temp GBA folder. That's all we need to do and now when it comes to Game Boy Advance ROM files, you can put them wherever you want inside the PSP memory card. Just remember, once we get into the emulator, you should know where they are located inside the memory card. Now I did manually create a ROMs folder at the root of the PSP memory card, but it's completely up to you where you want to put the game files. So you can do the same thing as I do on the video or decide your own uh, location you want to put them. Finally, I just copy and pasted a few games inside my ROMs folder and we are ready to disconnect from the PC and go back to the PSP. Okay, now we have Temp GBA emulator in our PSP menu and we can go ahead and launch the application from here. And with that, we are ready to play all of our favorite classics from the Game Boy Advance, but this time around on the PSP. Alright, how about we quickly check out how to launch games from the emulator and talk about some of the settings you may want to change or know about in the emulator. Let's take a look. Okay, this is the first menu that comes up when you launch the emulator and first, how to launch a game from here. 
Well, first you need to know where you put your games inside the memory card earlier. Now for me in this tutorial, I copied my games to a folder called ROMs at the root of my memory card. And we can see the path we are looking now by default up here. So this is basically the folders inside our memory card. Now pressing square can go up the path, so I press it until I'm at the root of my memory card and that's when I find my ROMs folder. But of course, like I said earlier, you may have chosen some other location for your games, so in your case this may differ from the video. Okay, now let's go over some settings you may want to know about. So first of all, you can open the emulator menu by pressing triangle by default. This is where you find your save state option right away and loading states. From here, you can also exit the emulator or load a different game. But I guess the more interesting options can be found inside the emulator options where we have a scaling options for the screen, for example and bilinear filtering option which smooths out the edge of the pixels but honestly I much prefer the non-filtered look even if it can be more pixelated. Just looks more sharp and how I want Game Boy Advance games to look but it's up to you which setting you prefer. Now from here you can also turn on boot from BIOS option if you want to see that classic boot up animation when launching games. Keep in mind that PSP cannot run every Game Boy Advance game at full speed all the time so you may want to play with the frame skip options depending on the game but I just have the default values here. Okay, now last thing I want to mention is gamepad config settings because from there you can customize what certain buttons do and in this video example I wanted the uh, square button to be my fast forward button which can come in very handy especially for the text heavy games or grinding in an RPG or in general just if you want to speed up a, a cutscene or something like that. Alright guys, I think that pretty much wraps up this video. Tell me down in the comments your favorite Game Boy Advance games. And by the way, if you're interested in playing classic Game Boy and Game Boy Color games on your PSP, definitely stay tuned here on my channel because I'm doing a separate video for that, which is coming to my channel soon, or by the time you're watching, may already be there. So definitely check that out. And also I have other PSP related videos, for example, how to play PlayStation 1 games on your PSP. So uh, check that out if you're interested or custom firmware, how to install it. But anyways, if you're into retro gaming from tutorials to graphics comparisons or history around the games, consider subscribing here on Kim's Retro Archives and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.